Multicolor printing has become way more accessible in the past couple of years. But how do you tell the slicer where to put all those colors? Let's take a look. So this is a new series I want to start working on using Orca Slicer and going through its functions. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Bamboo AMS color system for this specific video, but let me know what features of Orca Slicer you'd like me to cover. Today we're jumping into the multicolor and how you get those colors on your models. If you have one of the multicolor systems on the market, then you've likely gotten over these hurdles, but maybe you'll pick something up here that you didn't know. You've got the hardware, so that's the first hurdle. Now we just have to figure out how we need to tell the slicer what to do, and what the most efficient way to tell the slicer what to do is. So bamboo machines make use of a version of Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer is based on Super Slicer. So Super Slicer, Prusa Slicer, Bamboo Slicer. We're talking about Orca Slicer. When people build out different slicers, they usually just kind of reskin it. So for example, Creality Slicer is based on Cura, and... I think Elegoo might be the same situation. When Bamboo came along and used Prusa Slicer for the base uh, for their slicer, they didn't just reskin it. They added a whole lot of extra features. So calling Bamboo Studio a version of Prusa Slicer would really be doing it a disservice because it's added so much functionality specific to Bamboo machines. Now, if you ask me, as somebody that used to use Cura exclusively, Orca Slicer is the pinnacle. There's just not going to be a better slicer. If you're on Cura, I recommend you go to Orca Slicer. That's just all there is to it. Although, I would be willing to hear if you have a recommendation or a specific instance where you think Cura is better than Orca Slicer. Because, now that Orca Slicer has IDEX control though, I think that might be the last thing, the only reason why Kira was still installed on my computer. Now I don't think there's any reason to have it, honestly. But let me know in the comments if you have one silver bullet, the reason why you keep Kira on your computer, or the thing that keeps you from leaving Kira. But anyway, all that to say, Orca Slicer, based on Bamboo Slicer, based on Prusa Slicer, based on Super Slicer. Great slicer, open source, tons of community support, regular updates, every feature you could want. It's a good one. But one of the features that Bamboo added was the colorization option. That wasn't in Prusa Slicer and it is in Bamboo Studio. So I'm pretty sure this was Bamboo specific that was then ported over to Orca Slicer. This is the menu that allows you to choose where the colors go on your models. This is what we're gonna look at today. When you open Orca Slicer and import a model, select the model and then select the paint option. This is where we're gonna get all of our tools to paint our models. Here you'll be met with a box that allows for color selection based on what you have mapped in your AMS, as well as the tools that we can use to have better control over what part of your model gets painted and how. These different modes is what we're gonna go through because they allow you to paint the model in more efficient ways depending on what you're trying to accomplish or what effect you're trying to achieve. Then below each tool, there are specific values that you can change depending on what you need to do with that tool to get even that little bit more control. The first tool is the circle tool. If you're a millennial that's been crippled by the rising interest rates for housing, you're likely in the right peer group to identify this as the paint tool from Microsoft Paint. You likely spent loads of time using this very tool on your granny's computer in her basement computer room that also doubled as her Mary Kay storage room because she was a seller. Just me, I guess. This is the most basic version of painting. You just drag the cursor around, you can change the pen size to suit whatever geometry you're trying to paint, and this works just fine. The next tool is similar, and it's also a circle, but in the third dimension. This is the sphere tool. Three-dimensional circle, you like that? Yeah, you like that. This one allows you to make a circle of color on the surface of the model, but it also penetrates into the model. I don't have a specific use for this one. Honestly, I've never used this tool, but there's probably a time and place where this is gonna be the most effective tool. Now you know about it. Following that, we've got the triangle tool. This one's nice because it actually looks at your geometry and breaks it down into triangles, and that allows you to cover large chunks of your model in one click instead of just dragging the cursor around. Depending on your model, this one can save you a lot of time when you're trying to colorize something. Now one tool I find myself using a lot is the height range tool. This one's really good because it allows you to 
section the model effectively by its layer lines and color based on the height range of the object. I think of it as the machine performing a color change at a specific layer because that helps save on AMS color changing time and AMS waste. This one's helpful if you have a symmetrical model and you want to spice it up a little bit by doing some multicolor stuff. You can do half of the model in one color and then the other half in another color and then you've got two colors on one model without spending a lot of time introducing color changes and things like that. This one's super useful for colorizing just the top or bottom face of a project as well, just to add a little pop. Now for the tool that I actually use the most and likely is the tool that you use the most. This is the fill tool. This one inspects your geometry, creates surfaces and boundaries, and allows you to fill them. It takes one click. That's why this is the easiest and best tool in my opinion, and it's the one that I use far more than the others. The big thing with this is minimal input. You're coloring large swaths of your model with only one click. This one's good because it's also got a smart fill angle option. You can manipulate the slider to choose how sensitive it is to recognizing edges, which allows you to colorize shallow edges or curves by individual polygons, or if it's just gonna recognize that curve as one edge, you'll get a one click color. It's pretty good. So by lowering this value, you get finer surfaces and finer polygons, finer geometry to color. By moving the slider all the way up, you get to color larger surfaces and more defined shapes with one click. The final tool is the gap fill tool. I had to look this one up. I've never used it once, and I couldn't figure out how to use it on my own either. So I went to the bamboo wiki and learned a thing or two, because that's what it's all about. We're all out here learning. But what I learned is this one fills in spaces you may have missed. So especially if you're using the circle tool or something that can leave little tiny spaces in your model for colorization, this one fills the gaps. Who'd have thought? Again, we have a slider below that allows you to choose what size gap is acceptable and what size needs to be filled. So that's the intensity of your gap fill effectively. And again, this is helpful for those models where if you're just full on analog coloring with the circle tool and you've got a lot of little tiny dots and you don't want to go back through or click them individually, this is a quick way to do it. And that's what these tools are all about. What's the most efficient way to colorize your model? So there you have it, a short little video, first of many. How do you colorize your models? Let me know in the comments what you're working on. Let me know what slicers you're using. Let me know why you're not using Orca Slicer. Also, join the discussion on our Patreon if you'd like. I'm going to open up a discussion topic. Super free Patreon. Just come hang out if you'd like. Bye. You like that? Shaky hands, finger guns. I don't know if I can say the G word on YouTube.